in today's society, uh, what we have basically, what I, I believe anyway, is, is due to like pressures of crowding overpopulation and such, we have a neurotic society that uses drugs of one form or another to escape from this pressure of being close together. And at rock concerts is one of the places where people are very close together. So they use drugs. I mean, this is not the exception to the rule. They don't only use it here. I mean, that's why there are drug abuse clinics, basically, because it's out in the street. But what we're trying to do here is to deal with it. What we used to do, if someone just passed out during the show, uh, all we could do is put them in the back of, of a car or call an ambulance and send them down to the hospital where they were kept for a couple of hours, treated, gone through a whole bunch of bureaucratic red tape, and then let out to do what they can. Now, since the people are here, the, the, the kids that come here have grown accustomed to the clinic being here, and they're able to take care of people, and people who aren't able to control themselves. And, so, and it's not only drugs. There's a lot of cases of, you know, heat prostration and, you know, just people who are, aren't well physically, who put themselves in a crowded environment, become overcome by it, and they're able to treat them. And... Uh, the biggest thing I can say is nobody dies. Goodbye. But we hope to not run. We hope to see you again. It's Carl, listen to me. As people in our country gather for entertainment in larger and larger numbers, crisis intervention and medical treatment is necessary to protect people while they're part of these crowds. A crisis can come in any crowd, but a rock concert sees almost every crisis. Therefore, the medical care delivery system used here can be effectively applied to any crowd crisis where emergency on-site medical treatment is necessary. A total program of organization, staffing, and facility setup necessary to run an on-site medical unit has originated with the Haight-Ashbury Free Medical Clinic in San Francisco. The clinic has set up emergency medical units for both indoor and outdoor concerts across the country, sometimes covering as many as seven concerts a week. This is one of their indoor concerts at Winterland. I want you to My function is to uh, coordinate uh, all of the docs and all the medics that we have. The doctor's function is to, is to provide life support systems for those people who come in with acute drug overdoses or with acute uh, life-endangering emergencies. To be prepared for any unique medical, traumatic, drug, or psychosocial situation that might occur, the coordinator has to be able to rely on his core group of experts. These six or so people, physicians, assistants, and clinical pharmacists, must help the whole operation to remain flexible in delivery of service and advice. In planning and preparation, any differences in treatment philosophy should be resolved so that at the critical moment of actual patient care, errors in medical judgment or treatment can be avoided. The three major categories of treatment found in most crowd situations are major medical disorders and traumas, minor and major drug overdoses, 
and minor medical problems which exist in any large gathering, such as the need for suntan lotion and aspirin. A lot of our cases are minor. Uh, for instance, uh, every concert we've been at, we've, we've had somebody come in to ask for uh, cotton to put in their ear, or maybe have some, uh, some toilet tissue that's shoved into their ear they want us to pull out. So all of our cases, our surgery cases, aren't major. Some of them are quite minor. We train, uh, as I say, life support systems. We train uh, basic first aid. We train uh, keeping the airway open. Very basic stuff, stuff that you'd learn as an ambulance driver or as a first aid uh, volunteer, but, uh, but it's very basic when you come down to uh, concerts. In acute overdose cases or cardiac arrests, prompt treatment is essential. Don't waste time looking for constricted pupils or calling for endotracheal equipment. If indicated, follow the cardiopulmonary resuscitation technique for emergency treatment and immediately establish an airway. After the airway is clear, begin mouth-to-mouth -mouth rescue breathing, then re-evaluate all vital signs. Drugs should be administered only if absolutely necessary for the management of the case. The general rule at the clinic is, don't dose the dose. Usually for a, for a big concert, and we expect to see about 1% of all the people that come to any concert, so I'd mean if we, see, if we had 100,000 people, we'd expect to see 1,000 people as patients. You always see more clients if it's a day-long concert. You see more clients during the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. If it's uh, a nighttime uh, concert, you see more patients or clients just before and just after the main attraction goes on uh, uh, and uh, goes off. In other words, you see more people when, uh, when things aren't happening. When things are happening that can involve them, then they get out there and they get involved and they, uh, they don't come in. Fencyclidine, or PCP, also known as angel dust or crystal joints, is a drug of increasing popularity. It's sometimes erroneously marketed as THC, the active ingredient of marijuana. When smoked, inhaled, snorted, or ingested, PCP has the ability to produce a variety of effects. Small doses produce a state of drunkenness. Moderate doses can create a disassociation of mind and body, agitation, psychotic behavior, and catatonia or muscular rigidity. With a high dosage, a coma and respiratory depression or convulsions may occur. Okay, hang on. Okay, that's all right, buddy. Hang on, you'll be all right. Hang on, hang on. Just, just hang on there. That's all right. Let him, let him breathe a little oxygen. Okay. We'll slip his jacket off of him. That's good. Okay, that's fine. Patients may hyperventilate, therefore getting them to rebreathe their own air to gain back losses of carbon dioxide should be the first step in treating such a case. For this purpose, anything within reach can be used. Here, an available oxygen mask without oxygen was closest. A paper bag placed over the nose and mouth would work just as well. With PCP, external stimulation which might excite the patient should be avoided. A pin light shined in his eyes could trigger uncontrollable behavior. While monitoring vital signs, the best treatment is calm and soothing psychological support until the patient relaxes, regains his confidence, and can then come down gradually. I hate it. Oh. Oh. Listen, oh. It's cool. Everything's safe. Oh. You're going to be just fine. Oh. Come on. Everything's cool. Oh. Huh? 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 Blood pressure and other vital signs may vary erratically with the plane of anesthesia as well as the individual drug response of the patient. Okay. Yeah, we're getting it right along. Right, you 
In this situation, a physician must learn to treat drug crises with psychological as well as medical support. People reacting to LSD move fast and have a tendency to get violent. They're usually also irritable, apprehensive, and suspicious. Even in a calm environment, a patient on psychedelics can be completely freaked out by too much clinical equipment and is likely to look at an intravenous needle or catheter as if it is a snake that someone is trying to insert into his body. A person on a bad acid trip needs a calm, reassuring environment away from the crowd so that he can be sympathetically talked down, massaged, and helped to complete his trip. The doctors here feel it is a rare case where a freak out cannot be calmed in a quiet room without the use of clinical equipment or medication. Hi. 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 Treating one drug with another drug is avoided as much as possible by the clinic. Using Thorazine can be like hitting a brick wall at 60 miles an hour. In many ways, the Thorazine is worse than the acid. If clinically indicated, a minor tranquilizer like Valium may be given orally if requested. your energy into getting back out there and boogieing. I want to see the, the band. You want to see the band? Well, concentrate on it and you can go back out there. You just got a little overexcited, that's all. You're okay. Do, do you know where my, cool off. my Yeah, we've friends. gone to look for your friends. In concerts and large gatherings across the country from New York to Milwaukee to Oakland, little or no amphetamine or narcotic type problems have been noted. The biggest problem is alcohol, often associated with polydrug use. Call your mother. I'm not going to call your mother. We're not going to call your mother. We're not calling your mother. Rachel, listen to me. We're not going to call your mother. We just want you to sit down and talk to us and get your Don't shit together, and then you can go back out and watch. I'm not going to call your mother. All I did was have a little to drink. Yeah. I'm all right. to drink. I'm I know. Right. I know Don't you're all right. I just want to get to know you. I want to be your friend. Can all I right. be your friend? That's all I want. I'm not. I'm not going to call your mother. I How do you like the band? They're really far. 
Multi-drug users combine alcohol, LSD, PCP, cannabis, cocaine, tranquilizers, anything that happens to be available. Of all the drugs used, alcohol is the biggest offender. Alcohol potentiates most other psychotropic drugs, and when combined with sun and excitement, whether at an outdoor concert or a football game, it can cause extreme reactions. Half of drug treatment in a crowd is for alcohol alone. Compared to other drugs, it's a cheap high. More and more young people are using it in combination with their other favorites. We're not going to call your mother. We just want you to get it together because you were getting a little out of hand and we were afraid you'd hurt yourself. Right, I know. Right. I know you're okay. I just want, would you like some water? No. Would you like to sip on some water? No. Okay, well. I, I feel kind of sick. But Who's your favorite band? Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Did you see them this summer? No, I missed them. You missed them? Yeah. Wow. Were you away on vacation or what? No, no. no you just didn't, didn't go? Didn't have the money. Didn't have the money. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. They play them a lot on the radio here, though. We worked at their show. Oh, yeah? The big ones outside. You, you won't call my mom? No, uh-uh. We're just taking care of people, that's all. Can, can I go back out with my friends? Do you feel like you can walk and keep it together and uh, not, you want to, can't you just sit for a few minutes until you, you know, can walk good and, uh... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you want some coffee? No, no. No, you don't drink coffee? Well, just take it easy. Sit back for a while. You can hear them from in here anyway. Uh, yeah. Your stomach hurt? Yeah, no, I just feel kind of sick. I guess I drank too you much. You think you're going to throw up? No, no. Okay. Okay, you just won't call my mother. No, we're not going to call your mother. We're just going to sit. The polydrug user may sample a variety of illegal drugs, not realizing that almost 50% of the illegal drugs sold are not as advertised. This can present a major problem in diagnosis and treatment. Now, on-the-spot analysis of drug samples by a qualified lab can be conducted to determine what the drug actually is. The technique known as thin layer chromatography is rapid, accurate, and portable. When used, immediate predictions on drug treatment for any particular crowd can be made. Okay, we've got three samples here that we're going to run through an analysis. Um, this little tablet is an alleged mescaline sample, and, and it almost definitely isn't. So what we're going to do first is just crush it up and add a little bit of methanol. Samples are usually procured through three channels, directly from the person seeking aid, from the person uncertain of the content of the drug sold to him who wants it analyzed, and from purchases made by the medical team among the crowd. The sample is logged in a record book where its alleged content, description, origin of sale, street price if known, and adverse reactions are all recorded. They are then analyzed for actual content. Now, what the methanol will do is uh, pull out any drug that's in there. Like, for example, and most probably it's LSD. The methanol will dissolve the LSD. Okay, once we've got them in the methanol, all we need to do is spot them on one of these plates. And we'll start with the mescaline sample. And I'm using a little capillary pipette. And we spot about 10 to 20 microliters. I'm spotting them on two plates. One, we're looking for such things as amphetamine, amphetamine derivatives, uh, all the opiate derivatives. And on the other, we're looking for things like LSD and other tryptamines. A third plate is used to spot barbiturates. For comparison, a known standard solution of drugs is spotted next to the alleged sample. The spotted plates are placed in a developing tank containing a solvent solution, removed after 15 minutes, air dried, and then oven dried for a prescribed amount of time. Now we'll do a cocaine sample next. It turns out that there's an extremely high deception rate in street drugs. About 
of the things that are being sold on the street turn out to be something other than what they've been advertised as. And for an MD who's treating an adverse drug reaction, this can present quite a few problems. So on-the-spot drug analysis is certainly an aid to a physician's prognosis. The plates, when dried, are then sprayed with varied reagent solutions to give visualization. Both the color reaction with the spray and the location of the developed spot are indicative of the identity of a particular drug. Using this procedure, the presence of any street drug with the exception of marijuana will be indicated. Marijuana requires a fourth plate, but is seldom analyzed as cannabis users cause few problems and seldom need treatment. Uh, before going into a facility, I have to go in and evaluate the room that we're going to have and make sure that we have electricity that's going to be necessary, water facilities, sanitation, that sort of thing. Indoor facilities are usually limited to the amount of existing space available. In Winterland, the medical unit is set up close to the restrooms, to outside exits, and to the other service areas. Although the treatment facility should be away from the main auditorium and stage area, still it should be close enough for easy access by patients needing help. At an outdoor concert, we use an existing dugout concession stand or a tent as a field hospital. Every facility is different and we always have to improvise, but in either situation the unit is divided into four basic treatment sections. The waiting area or buffer zone is equipped with coffee and magazines for people who just want to get away from the noise or the heat. The intake or triage area is the central receiving point for gathering data and medical histories from patients and friends. If necessary, acute care is given here before the patients are channeled to other areas such as emergency. The talk-down area is for the patients who need to calm down and is a quiet place to rest or just sleep it off. We like to have as much space as we possibly can wherever we are. Um, in this particular setup, we're a little cramped. We don't have as much space as we'd like to have, but we've got to make do with it. And we've made the... Uh, we have, my first consideration here is a stretcher case. That's the case that we can't waste any time on. So your traffic flow has to be under control and you have to have easy accessibility to the emergency room, which this system here is pretty good for. We can get in here and just dump them down and get to, get to work and, and not waste much time at all. Uh, my second question at that time is what, who are the groups? And then I have to find out what kind of following they have, what size is the crowd going to be, and then go into staffing, which is done by the drug patterns that are in that particular type, following that particular group. Different music groups bring in different types of problems. Hard rock or acid rock brings in a psychedelic following, where a folk group usually has a mellow crowd. All crowds have alcohol. Every crowd should be researched and pre-analyzed to estimate the age of those in attendance, the size of the crowd, the area of the country, and the type of drugs most likely to be used. With this information, you will have the basic criteria necessary for picking a qualified staff. Next, it's getting together the equipment and supplies, which I try and get by donation whenever I can. And sometimes that's a midnight requisition, but that usually slides through. And it keeps our expenses down because this is a community service and we're trying to keep it as relatively simple, expensive as we can, uh, simply inexpensive as we can. Then it's transportation of the materials and getting things into the facility which requires getting in touch with the building manager, the promoter, and the security people and getting everyone's passes and parking permits. Which door do we come in and how do I get there after I'm there and that sort of thing. Um, once the show begins then I go into the systems 
get the system explained to the staff that's working that night. It's a very simple system and I keep wearing out the word simplicity so that we can be flexible because we are a volunteer staff and we very often will go for three or four days and not see the same working staff. Many times these people have not worked with one another and at the same time we're teaching. The treatment system is made up of a core medical team who remain in the medical unit at all times. The OD team consists of the team doctor, a medical assistant, a clinical pharmacist, and two stretcher bearers who are out in the field bringing in overdose victims. The stretcher teams are helped by field spotters who move in pairs through the crowd patrolling particular problem areas, giving immediate first aid, and calling for an OD team or stretcher team when necessary. When a patient is brought in, the clinic has to try and get as much information as they can without being too clinical. Drug users can freak out on too many clipboards and questions. Intake personnel try to find out what drugs the patient has taken and any relevant past medical history and the whereabouts of friends who could help. At that point, most patients just need to sit quietly away from the noise and be helped through their trips by volunteer counselors who can talk them down with calm understanding and psychological support. Uh, during the show, we're in, in, I rotate around the building or around the stadium or wherever we might be and keep in touch with security to make sure that we don't have a hot spot. If we do, we get down there and we try and catch it before anything happens. If we can foresee a gate crash where we might have several people who might get banged up in, in some kind of a hassle there, we get ready to get our emergency room going on a pass-through system and get it expedited as much as we can. We cannot condemn or condone the reason for anyone's crisis. The number of patients that we see at any given concert proves the need for simple but effective medical treatment. On-site medical facilities are one answer to emergency room overloads and allow our patients to receive personal attention. The delivery of individualized emergency care requires medical personnel experienced in the identification and handling of traumatized and overdosed people, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, the utilization of talk-down therapy, an effective system of patient triage, administration of a flexible emergency treatment facility, pre-analysis of crowd dynamics, and a non-judgmental approach to drug treatment. This emergency medical treatment must be immediate. On-site instant medical care a dash of mash, is an innovative and necessary component in medical practice. The need for flexible and mobile on-the-spot medical units keeps growing as crowds become larger and individuals become more susceptible to stress and the pressures of crowding. If this need is fulfilled, tragedies that occur in any crowd can be virtually eliminated.